Okay, so one question that I like to ask is, uh, can we create or bioengineer the mini brain, the tiny little brain we can create in the future? And the question is, why would that need, or why would that be useful? In order to explain this, first, I need to tell about drug development process. This is what drug development process is like. We start with the DG study. We conduct the research to understand how disease works and what problem disease cause. Then we look for the molecule that might fix the problems. So in the beginning, we have uh, 10,000 large number of library that we are looking at. And then we test those first in the lab to see which one have the highest potential to treat the disease. We select a certain number of the molecule and test them in animal for the safety and efficacy. Then it narrowed down to the small numbers, such as 5 to 10. And then we move that molecule further to the human clinical trial. At the end, we end up with a single molecule to submit the FDA for the regulation. And these process takes a long time. It's 15 to 20 years it takes. And also, it costs about $2 billion to get the one single drug. And we have to sacrifice a lot of animals. So, so much money and time is a problem. But there are even more problems on this pathway. Using animal is a problem. You have to sacrifice animal. You have to harm them and kill the animal. So there is an ethical concern. And also, you have to grow them first before testing them in the drugs in the animal. So it's very time consuming. And also, growing them, caring them, and testing them require the special facilities and expertise. So it's very resource intensive. And also, the finding from the animal tests vary from lab to lab. The result from one lab does not always replicate to the other labs, the, or the results. And also, the finding from the animal test does not always scale to the humans. So there are a lot of possibility or can be failed at the end. And even more than that, once it runs into the clinical trial, there are even more problems. Testing humans is a very risk to the subject. You cannot modify the human the way we can do with the animal test or cell and tissue culture in petri dishes. So there are a lot of limitations once it comes into the clinical trial. And then there is another way to test the drug. We can use the, the Imro-based stem cell. So stem cell can differentiate any type of cell. So we can test the drug with the specific tissues and organs. However, Taking the stem cell from him embryo is a risk to the female donors. In worse, it can destroy the human embryo, and it have a very limited availability. The good thing, 
the researchers is found a way to generate the stem cell out of skin. So patients simply do the biopsy and get the skins and further culture the skin cell to generate the stem cell. So stem cell can be generated by reprogramming the skin cell through the genetic modification. And this method allowed to provide infinite number of stem cell. And also, as a stem cell, it has the same property like an inborn stem cell. It can differentiate any type of cells and tissue. So using this uh, method, allow to use the ethical and same safe stem cell. That brings us to my research at North Carolina A&T State University. So my research is really focused on the differentiation of stem cell to generate the mini brain. Differentiation, it seems easy, but it's not as sounds as. It's so difficult. <laughs> So differentiations involve a lot of engineering stops. We have to develop the materials which cell can grow and differentiate and provide the scaffold to create, to maintain the 3D structures as a mini brain. And we have to work on the signaling molecule, chemicals, and mechanical regulators to direct the the stem cell differentiation to the brain specific cell. And also, we have to work the, the device. We have to work on the miniaturization of bioreactor, which can really accommodate the cell matrix as a brain, mini brain. Then, why mini brain? Why we need the mini brain? If you look at the brain, Brain is the most complex organs in our body. Brain made of hundred billions of the nerves and glial cell, not to mention all different type of the brain cell. Brain provide every thought, mind, feeling, emotions, and then even experience. If you look at the current status of treatments, there is no cure for brain disease and disorders. And there are only the treatments are available to reduce the symptoms or maintain the quality of life. That is the situation right now. Then why, why, why brain research is so slow? The first thing I like to mention is there is no human brains available to test on. Yeah, right? And then also, there is a large gap between the human brain and animal brain. We cannot really, there is a limited availability to use the, the animal brain. And also, if you look at the brain disease and disorder, these are as complex as brain by itself. So brain, I believe it's uh, the, one of the, the important topics to explore in the future. To recap this, this is current pathway for drug development. So we culture the cell and tissue in our petri dishes, and then once we select the molecule, then move to the animal and further down to the human clinical trial. The question is, this method has been for many, many years. And is there any way to disrupt this way? Or is there any alternative way to solve these problems, which I mentioned? So this is the pathway we hope we can make the contribute in the future. What if we use a mini brain, which derived from the patient's skin cell. And that mini brain have all characteristics of the human features in brain. And we can 
test the drug, and then we can identify drugs which one is wrong using the mini brain. Further down, we can test the very specific drugs for the very particular patients before giving them to see which drugs are work best. It's like a personalized medicine. So I think there are a lot of potentials on this pathway. And we believe eventually we can reduce the, the animal use and provide as an alternative for the MRM test. And this is the mini brains our lab at North Carolina a and State University Department. As you can see, there are like a 30 to 40 individual mini brain, and each have a couple of millimeters in diameters. And each one have a millions of cells. They are all connected and communicating each other. And also, this cell is grown from patients, Alzheimer patients. So it have all genetic information of that particular patient. So we believe it's promising. However, we have problem. If you, look at, if you look at the brain, brain have highly vascularized tissue, meaning that there are a lot of blood vessels, and brain consumes a lot of energy. They need the oxygen and nutrition carry in the blood vessel. And blood vessel also form the strong barrier to protect any toxins and pathogens carry in the blood vessel. And also blood vessel clears any waste or toxins that produce inside of brain. For all these reasons, hey, we need a blood vessel to put in the mini brain. So we need, in order to increase the size of mini brain or merchers brains, we need a blood vessel. And the picture shows the, the kind of simplified vessel. And blood vessel is a, consists of specific cell type and also materials to form the strong barriers. So we need to engineer the blood vessel. But before generating the blood vessel, we need the hydrogen matrix to host the blood vessel. We have to bring the blood vessel in the matrix. So we use the porcine brain. We have to go to the butcher shop and get the brain. And then we're removing the cell from the brain. And then we redigest them as a hydrogen. And further, we have to control the, the mechanical property, such as stiffness, strength, and viscoelastics to maximize the blood vessel generations. And we use this to generate the vascularized mini brain. This is uh, what our lab at North Carolina a and is working on. We apply the engineering principle, such as mechanics, fluid dynamics, bioengineering, put all the, the idea together to induce the blood vessel and further integrate to the mini brain. For example, we have to control the, the perfusion to maintain the blood vessel to merge and stay for long to provide the oxygen and nutrition to the, the mini brain. We have to work on the, the host matrix. If it's uh, not biocomparable, either the vessel will be paid away. And also, we have to look at the, how the mini brain is maturized, means how they grow their own functions as they grow. So we are working on the various aspects of mini brains in our lab. This is what we are planning for futures. Our lab right now is in the process of generating all different regions of brain. I think in the futures, 
we can create the whole entire brain, even more than that, hey, maybe we can provide the replicate of a hundred of the mini brain for the specific patients. And maybe we can revolutionize the research on modeling the brain disease and disorders. So the last uh, conclusion, what if in the future every patient have their bank of mini brain which can improve the diagnosis and further tailor the treatments. Thank you. <laughs>